What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today we're gonna to take a look at six inverts that you'll regret. Now in the right tank, you can keep pretty much any invert, but for the vast majority of us who want a general reef, there are certain restrictions that you need to be aware of. Now, if this is your first time at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, enough of that nonsense, let's get to the list. First up is the arrow crab. When you start looking in marine shops, the arrow crab stands out as one of the freakiest inverts. They look like something from War of the Worlds, and the thought of having something like that in your tank is seriously cool. And they're known to eat bristle worms, which some new reef keepers wrongly think of as a pest rather than free cleanup crew. But a quick Google will tell you they can grow up to six inches across, which is frankly enormous for an aquarium crab. And they're a risk to your other cleanup crew, as they may eat shrimp, snails, or even small fish. They've even been known to eat corals like zoas and mushrooms. Now there's nothing quite like an arrow crab, but my suggested alternative is the Hawaiian hermit crab. They're great scavengers and have really cool stripy red legs. The only downside is that they don't always cohabit well with snails, as they'll kill them if their shell looks like a good fit for a new home. And for that reason, you absolutely should not keep them with conch snails. But to my mind, they are the coolest of the hermits, which is why they make this list. Number five on my list of inverts you'll regret is the sea hare. There's a fair chance that at some point in your saltwater career, you'll have an outbreak of green hair algae in your tank. And sea hares are often suggested as great green hair algae predators. But they can be really hit and miss at eating algae, and even if they do munch through the stuff, you'll need to remove them from your tank when they're done, or they'll starve to death. That is assuming they don't die before you get the chance to rehome them. The great news is that the blue tuxedo urchin is a truly epic algae eater. When it comes to battling algae, your first port of call is to get your filtration and parameters in check, but a predator can also be a real help, and a blue tuxedo urchin is a great green hair algae eater. They'll also eat various other types of algae, and they don't get very big, so they're a great long-term option. They do try to cover themselves in things like shells and frag plugs, so make sure your corals are well secured, or they'll take them for a walk. And they also eat coralline algae, which most people like the look of. But in my opinion that's actually a good thing, because coralline can clog the surface of your rock and reduce its filtration capacity. And at number four we have the camel shrimp. When you see these guys in shops, they rock back and forward like they're dancing. And they're pretty cool looking, so they will easily entice you into buying one but they have a reputation for eating certain corals and certain types of anemones, and getting them out of your tank once they've gone rogue isn't easy, so they can do some real damage. And while I'm at it, if you want to keep clean a shrimp, you should probably think twice about getting a fire shrimp or boxer shrimp, which can be aggressive towards other shrimp. Now I'm going to suggest two alternatives here, the first of which is of course the skunk cleaner shrimp. They're pretty much the most peaceful and reef safe shrimp around, they look awesome, and they'll set up a cleaning station where your fish can go to get dead skin and maybe even external parasites nibbled off. If you get one of these, be aware that they molt, so if you think yours has died, take a closer look to see if it's just shed its skin. And the second alternative is the pistol shrimp. If you pair one of these with an appropriate goby, they'll buddy up, live together and look out for each other. It's a mesmerising symbiotic relationship that in my humble opinion no reef tank should be without. First on the podium of inverts you'll regret is starfish. Now this doesn't apply to all stars, but I'm talking about things like coral eating chocolate chip and red knob sea stars, and the uber delicate blue linkia star. The blue linkia in particular is an absolute beaut, but they just don't do well in aquariums, especially anything other than a very well established aquarium. And the awesome looking chocolate chip star is a liability in a reef and comes with a reputation for eating corals and cleanup crew. The obvious alternative is the sand sifting star, but I'm instead going to suggest the banded brittle star. They're from the same family as starfish, but have a small circular disc surrounded by more spindly legs. And they're just fantastic detritivores, which makes them an awesome part of your cleanup crew. You need to be careful with brittle stars, as some are a danger to slow moving fish, so make sure you're definitely not getting one of the risky ones. And while they're pretty cool critters, they're nocturnal, so don't expect to see much of them after you introduce them. The runner-up of inverts you'll regret is Mexican turbo snails. Now this is arguably a controversial opinion, as they do have their place. They're great algae eaters, and they even chew through green hair algae. Although of course you now have an urchin for that. But the reason they're on this list is because they don't tend to live very long, and they don't readily breed. And to me that makes them feel like an expendable item, which I'm really not a fan of. And even without that, it's a pain in the ass having to replace them all the time. The only plus side is that their shells are pretty cool, so it will make an awesome base for an encrusting coral to cover when they die. 
And the alternative is the awesome banded choker snail. They're fantastic at keeping algae at bay before it's had a chance to take hold, which makes them an absolutely essential member of your cleanup crew. And they breed like rats, so you're always likely to have a solid supply once you introduce them into your aquarium. As a Brucey bonus, I'm going to throw conches in here too. They're real quirky characters, and they even eat diatoms, which makes them an ideal early introduction to your tank to help combat the ugly stage after the cycle has finished. And the number one invert you will regret is the red bubble tip anemone. Clownfish swimming around an anemone is as iconic a look as there is in the hobby. And the thought of recreating that in your own home is what gets many people into the hobby in the first place. But if you want to keep one, you've got to put some serious planning into it and be prepared to make sacrifices. For a start, they're completely unsuitable for new tanks and you can forget about keeping one for at least the first six months as they won't tolerate the chemistry changes a young tank goes through. So if you then put them in a nice established tank with loads of corals, but don't put them quite in the right spot, they will then walk across your rock work until they find the right place, stinging your corals as they go. They can also get big and multiply by splitting, so you can easily end up with half a dozen in your tank in no time. But the good news is there are plenty of alternatives. Things like hammer corals, torch corals, zoas, and any coral with longish tentacles can provide a similar home for your clownfish. So you still get the interaction with clowns as well as the wavy movement. Although clowns can irritate corals that host them if you're unlucky. So that takes me to rock flower anemones. They're much hardier than bubble tip anemones, come in absolutely stunning colours, and while they're too small for a clownfish, they play host to things like sexy shrimp, anemone shrimp and porcelain crabs, which gives you an excuse to get some pretty cool inverts in your tank. They still give you that symbiotic relationship, and they can be kept in groups, so you can grow yourself a beautiful flower garden. So there you have it then, that is my list of six inverts that I think you'll regret buying. I'd love to know what you think though, so let me know if there are any others you'd avoid, and if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.